hello all welcome back to software testing course so yesterday we had seen till uh, black box test case design techniques right so today we'll get started with the white box test case design techniques okay so first let us understand what is white box testing so white box testing is also called as glass box testing or gray box testing okay so in this white box testing we take into consideration the implementation details such as what data structures have been used how the code has written we actually see through the code and do the testing so that is white box testing okay so the implementation details which we consider for the white box testing are your code at the component level or the basic unit level program then interaction between the modules or interaction between the components that is your at module level then interaction between the modules which is we call as a subsystem level then the subsystem interconnection at a system level basically your unit level module level subsystem level and system level implementation details are considered into your white box test case design technique so first we'll understand what is uh, code coverage so this comes under your uh, white box testing uh, itself okay so here um, or uh, at the unit or the component level the structural testing involves generating the test cases based on the code which the developer has written so the statement coverage condition coverage and the path coverage are generally done at your component or the unit level by the programmers right the developers when they write the program they they do the basic coding like the statement coverage condition coverage and all they'll take into consideration so using some tools we can check the code coverage easily so we had already seen right profilers are the tool profiler is a tool which allows us to check the code coverage like how many lines have been executed how many number of lines have not been executed that can be uh, you know found out using the tool called as profilers fine so why we use this uh, tool profiler is because uh, the quality can be ensured at the basic component level itself right but it is quite difficult to do it manually so when you run a program how can you tell i mean manually how can you tell that okay this many number of lines have been executed this line has been not executed it is quite difficult to do it manually right so we use the tool called as a profiler okay so this is about your code coverage so the next one is internal boundary value testing so we can apply the boundary value te uh, technique to design the test cases in the white box uh, testing as well so values that are on the boundary of the equivalence classes are high yield test cases so such values need to be chosen as test inputs so in the black box testing we we would uh, whenever we test the functionality it is quite easy to check the boundary values right if there is a number so but for the um, white box testing how do you do it so it is quite similar okay we'll take a example and we'll understand it so you can uh, see this example here right for this for loop is there so for i is equal to 0 i less than or equal to 100 i plus plus then you have some statements here so how many times this loop would be executed is it 100 times or 101 times so it has started from 0 and you have this condition right so it would this for loop would execute for 101 time so does the program or the programmer really want to execute this 100 times or 101 times so this could be a mistake right so this is a boundary value here 100 is a boundary value so the testing has to be done at the loop boundaries for your white box testing okay suppose you have if condition statements then in that if condition there you might be having some condition there right greater than equal to less than or equal to there could be some numbers so you have to ensure that those statements execute properly the symbols or you know the greater than sign less than sign whatever you use whether it is correct how many times it is executing these all things needs to be kept in mind while doing your internal boundary value testing so the next one is structural testing at the module level so when you integrate units into modules or classes into a functional module then you can test the module taking into the consideration the module structure so what is a module basically it is a group of units right so whenever you have uh, done your unit level testing what you do you 
combine those units to form a module right so how you do the module testing in the white box testing so let's take an example so let's say we have a banking software so there is an abstract class here we'll take into consideration object oriented thing here so say this account is a abstract class and then from which you have a, a savings bank account current account and the fixed deposit okay so you cannot form any object of the type account because it is an abstract class but you can form objects of the type savings bank current account and the fixed deposit so to test this module you can form accounts of various type and check the methods or the interfaces in this account next we will see how to test at a system level so when you interconnect modules and develop the complete system you will know how the modules are interconnected and hence using the information testing can be done okay so that means uh, so what is a system basically it is a collection of units right so basically first we what we did while testing so we created the units we tested them we combined the units to form the modules then we uh, we have done the module testing now at the last what we'll do we'll combine all the modules and we'll develop the entire system say for example so this figure it shows you the structure of a website okay so there are four links on the home page say suppose uh, these are the four links about us product services and contact us uh, contact us are the four links on the home page so for each link what are the next level links these are those have to be identified so you need to test whether the same structure is indeed there in the website so you also need to test all the links and ensure that there is no missing link or the broken link say suppose whenever you open the website you have the home page and in the home page you have four links so you have to click on each link and find out whether what is happening what are you get uh, i mean when you click on a link what is getting displayed so if you click on about us you have to check whether management and workforce links are displayed or not so if you click on management link so its related contents are displayed or not so all these things have to be tested in case of your um, system level testing okay so the third technique in the designing of the test cases is your experience based test case design technique so this experience uh, based test case design technique it is more of a art than science so as you gain experience in testing you become smarter in knowing the weakness of your developers and the requirement analyst so you design the test cases keeping in view these weaknesses and generally you succeed in this one okay so in the experience based testing there are two types again one is error guessing and the second one is exploratory testing so error guessing it comes through your experience okay so as you gain expertise and experience in testing you can easily guess what are uh, what type of mistakes the developers make in implementing the functionality and writing of the code so we had just seen in the for loop uh, in the internal boundary value testing of the white box we had seen so instead of uh, running the for loop for 100 times the programmer might have made mistake in running that particular for loop for 101 times okay so another example could be the error uh, if say suppose uh, there should be a proper error which has to be displayed but instead of that you know it is not giving a proper error so or say suppose that uh, for example uh, you have to calculate whether a person is a senior citizen or not so in that case the programmer might have made mistake in uh, you know guessing the age like if it is 65 exactly 65 then what should be the case whether he is a citizen a senior citizen or not okay so these are the type of errors which you can guess from your expertise from the tester's expertise and experience okay so your error guessing it is simple test based on your gut feeling so highly experienced test engineers can detect many defects in rather short time using this approach the second one is exploratory testing so while testing we use the predefined test cases right so this this is called as scripting testing scripted testing so the testing is carried out without using the predefined test cases we call it as a exploratory testing so here the test cases are designed and executed in real time as against by your predefined test cases that means 
you will not have any test cases at the starting of your uh, testing phase so as and when you get your uh, software for testing so parallelly you test your software as well as you write your test cases okay so some people uh, they do not like this ad hoc testing like parallelly doing the test cases as well as your uh, uh, testing of the software but it is a very helpful technique so when you are testing the functionality of the software you may suddenly feel that the need to try out some new test cases which might not be possible in your uh, predefined test cases so what will happen in a predefined test case you already have uh, analyzed the requirement you have written the test cases so once that activity is complete say you have the software with you and you select or you go back to the test cases whatever you have written you see that and you execute that on the software but here in the exploratory testing what will happen so you will not have any predefined test cases right so as and when you get the software for testing you test it and parallelly you write the test cases so here you have a chance that whenever you are you know uh, testing some uh, functionality you may try out new things okay which is not possible in your predefined test cases so you can find a defect actually with this uh, exploratory testing so based on the principles of the test case uh, design whatever we have discussed we will work out with the various test cases such as uh, uh, we'll see two case studies based on this uh, whatever we had seen the test case design techniques right black box white box and experience based so we'll consider two test cases uh, sorry uh, case studies okay so the first one is test cases for an ivr system so to test this ivr system ivr is nothing but interactive voice response okay so we have to design the various test cases keeping in mind all the things all the test case design techniques we have discussed and various quality parameters that need to be tested so your ivr system that is interactive voice response it consists of two parts one is the hardware to which two telephone lines can be connected and the other one is the application software so assume assume that you have two users who can access the ivr system simultaneously through their fixed or mobile tele telephones so the user can dial an ivr number to obtain the arrival or the departure time of a train by keying in the train number so if this is our requirement then how do we do the how do we generate the test cases or what are the different types of uh, you know uh, functionality testing or what are the things we are going to do if this is the requirement so we'll see the test cases now okay so first is the functional testing so what is the function of your ivr system so there could be two functional parameters here first one you have to design the test case for the testing of the system for valid train numbers and test for the invalid train numbers this becomes your functional testing then we'll talk about the state transition test so this state transition testing it is nothing but in the black box uh, we had seen right so state transition so we have different states for that particular system so what are the different states so whenever you dial an ivr number you get the ivr response and you then disconnect this is one state or one test case in your state transition testing the next one is you can dial the ivr number and then disconnect it third one is you can dial the ivr number you can type in or you can key in the train number and then disconnect okay so these are the different types of states which we can identify then in the structural testing what you can do you can draw the complete menu structure of the ivr and test all the possible parts there now comes the performance testing so what you can do here so you can have a test case for uh, these three things that is test the system when two users they access simultaneously from their fixed phones two users uh, when they access simultaneously the system from the mobile phones and two users simultaneously but one from the fixed and one from the mobile phone so you have to take into consideration what is the performance whenever these three test cases are executed so next is the stress testing so the test you have to test the system when the three users are accessing it is simultaneously so what are, what you will get whenever you know three users simultaneously access the ivr system so when two users they should get a ivr uh, response but the third one should get a engaged tone okay then comes the gorilla testing you randomly dial some number and check what uh, response you get 
so the next one is experienced based testing so when you use an ivr system repeatedly you get used to the uh, system like if you dial the number what are the message you get if you uh, dialing another number what are the messages you get right so you may like to uh, key in the train number without waiting for the long message to be completed so this comes from your experience so you can do some you know uh, repeatedly whenever you test a software you become used to it and you will come to know what are the messages or errors that are there so that you can skip those part and you can do other testing so for the ivr system these are again a uh, uh, set of uh, different test cases for the different types of testing so you can go through these all things okay i'll now talk about the second case study that is um, test cases for fingerprint recognition system so uh, fingerprint recognition system it is used to allow the entry only to the authorized persons right so at the entry point the fingerprint is compared you take the fingerprint then it is compared with the pre stored finger, fingerprint in the database if this is your requirement then what are the test cases you are um, writing for this particular requirement so the test cases can be so you first that uh, test the system for the valid uh, cases that means you have to check whether authorized persons are allowed to log in you have to check for the invalid cases that means unauthorized person should not be allowed to access then you can test the performance by checking uh, the time taken to allow the authorized user and reject the unauthorized user a test accuracy rate by testing multiple hundred users to calculate the percentage of false recognitions so again tolerance by applying you know how your system is tolerant to different types of test cases you can apply ink to your finger and then you can try logging in whether it is allowing or not you have to check this one so then check the overriding feature so if an authorized person is disallowed by the system then what is the procedure next then you can check the security of the computer in which the fingerprint data is stored by checking the password screen to access your computer or the database so these are the some test cases that can be uh, used for this particular requirement okay that's it for today we'll conclude our session thank you